Meiosis has a few things that make it distinctly different from mitosis. First, it's going to produce haploid cells, so it must pair the homologous chromosomes and separate them. Second, the gametes produced will not be identical. There are a number of ways that genetic diversity is infused into the resulting gametes. And third, two divisions are going to be required. A few similarities to note, though, the cell is still going to go through interphase. DNA is still going to be replicated during S phase of interphase. The microtubules or spindle fibers still regulate the movement of the chromosomes. And sister chromatids are still attached by cohesins at their centromeres. So that the, it's the cohesins keeping the sister chromatids together still, just like in mitosis. The two divisions of meiosis I talked about are meiosis 1 and 2. How easy is that? And their phases are all named with a 1 or a 2 after each name. Be sure to add the 1 or the 2 whenever you're talking about these phases, or I'm going to think you're talking about mitosis. The biggest difference between the two processes is definitely happening during prophase 1. But a couple of other things to look out for. You're going to want to look out for the terms tetrad, synapsis, and crossing over along with chiasmata when we're talking about prophase 1. You're going to want to watch out that metaphase 1 divides the homologs, so it's going to take a diploid cell down to a haploid cell at that point. So everything from that point on is haploid. And then when we get into meiosis 2, you're going to see that that's very, very similar to mitosis, except that the cells are now haploid instead of diploid. So let's focus in on prophase 1 for a little while. Prophase 1 is the longest of all cell division phases. Actually, female gametes stay in prophase 1 through maturing in the womb all the way to later in their life. Um, it is an extremely, extremely long phase for some of these cells. But you're still going to have a set of sister chromatids. They're going to be side by side with their homolog, which is another set of sister chromatids. They're the same length. They have the same centromere location. They're going to have the same gene types, but maybe different alleles. And that's just from a second parent. Because the four chromatids are so close together, we call these a tetrad. And at certain spots, there's going to be a a thing, a structure called a chiasmata forming, and so that's what I'm going to show you on the next slide. So here you have your homologs. I've stretched them out some because these really are long and stringy, even though they're condensed. There's a lot of genetic information there. And they're attached by cohesins, which I've drawn in yellow, and then they've got the synapsis attaching them in the center. So the two homologs are held together at that synapsis. When you're just looking at them though, the two chromatids can cross over joining segments and forming this X-shaped structure that we call a chiasmata. The process again is called crossing over because one sister chromatid is crossing into the other sister chromatid. And the result of that is going to be that they exchange segments. Now why is this important? Well, consider the following. If one pair of sister chromatids has all the dominant alleles or versions of the gene, and so I'm making it pink for the mom, and the one pair has all the recessive, and that's blue for the paternal chromosome, very stereotypical, if crossing over happens right here, then the resulting sister chromatids, or the resulting now different chromatids, are going to have a mixture of dominant and recessive genes. So when the chromosomes you inherit, if this was your parent, you're getting a mixture of that parent's mother's and father's genes all combined into one. Crossing over is really a source of endless genetic possibilities. You're getting these new, novel combinations of alleles in a single chromosome. And this is something we're going to talk about more in genetics.
because this phenomenon allowed us to help map the locations of genes on chromosomes, but for now, this is what you need to know.